Josh, first of all, uh, just want to say thanks. I've used Zencaster for several years now because back when I went looking there, there weren't very many audio recording apps that separated the audio tracks and the competitors out there that did were, you know, probably more expensive or com- complicated than I wanted to spend or focus on at the time. So Zencaster was a perfect fit for me then and has remained such. So thank you. Oh yeah. Well, thank you so much. I'm really glad you've been finding the product useful and uh, really happy to be here. Well, and, and the reason that you're here primarily is just until a few short weeks ago, Zencaster was primarily a place where people could record their podcasts, both audio and video. Now you guys are, I would say a whole new company. Tell us about all the new features you've recently announced. Yeah, thank you. No, we're, we're very excited. We've expanded a lot and really it's all about focusing on podcasters more, um, or zooming out to help podcasters more with all the other problems that they have in making a successful podcast. You know, as you know, our entry to market was just helping podcasters do great remote recordings, um, which was a really big pain point still is, but that does not equal a successful podcast. We had so many people coming and recording and then they said, okay, now what? And we were like, well, there's like, you know, five to 10 other tools and services you may need to use to get this ready to then go put it somewhere to publish it. And then you're going to have to figure out how to find your own audience. And um, that doesn't even mean monetization, which in the end, that's really what most podcasters are interested in is they want to grow their audience and they want to monetize it by and large. And so we decided, hey, you know, we've always been about podcast creators. Why don't we um, actually you know, hold the hand the whole rest of the way so that we're not leaving them kind of giving them audio files and kicking them out the doorstep and having them have to figure out the whole rest of the process. So now you can record, produce and publish all from Zencaster, as well as we are bringing together a monetization network and helping connect brands with creators um, and helping them monetize. And we're putting some of the first money that uh, these podcasters ever have ever made from their podcast into their pocket. Feels really amazing. The brands love it as well. They're all looking for a better way to connect with their audiences in a uh, a more kind of natural way. Um, and I think podcasting really, really provides that um, uh, an amazing way for brands to connect with audiences in a way that they're not just slapping an ad across content, but they're maybe participating. Maybe they're a guest on a show. Maybe they have their own podcast. <clears throat> Um, there's all kinds of options. And so brands are eager to get in. Creators are eager to find that success and monetize. And we're really happy to be facilitating. Well, the changes and the new features certainly speak to your ability to keep up with the market. I can tell you from my own experience with this podcast, but probably more broadly heading up the marketing podcast network, where I've got a bunch of other, you know, uh, voices and, and, and hosts and personalities and, and experiences to factor in. But having a one-stop shop for kind of all the things was really badly needed. Was that the primary sort of insight that led to the work was you've got to consolidate all these tools to make it easier for people? Yeah, I mean, podcasting has been trying, has been bursting at the seams trying to grow, but it's been sort of artificially prevented from doing that just because they're, the tools and the infrastructure haven't been in place. <clears throat> Excuse me. The tools and the infrastructure haven't been in place to um, support it. And so, you know, what we find when we were talking to our creators is we say, how long does it take you to make a single episode on average? That was six hours, a six hour process. And we'd say, Mm -hmm. okay, on average, how many different tools are you using? It was like 10 to 14 different tools and services. And so if you can imagine like Instagram, take Instagram for an example, what if you had to use five different apps and it took you three hours to make an Instagram post, how many people would actually engage in that medium or Twitter or any of these places. It's, um, it just prevent, it keeps so many people out of being able to engage or a lot of people try and then they realize, Hey, I thought this was going to be easy and now it's taking way more time and they give up before they have the chance to even really get started. Yeah. All right. So so let me see if I can play a really big, big problem, big bottleneck that can be solved. And then that, opens up the market so that everybody can engage and you get um, just a much better community. Very nice. 
So let me see if I can translate this to folks listening properly. Check and make sure I've got all this right. So I can certainly schedule my podcast interview in Zencaster the way I always have. I can preload my intro music or video pre-roll bits, all the pre-recorded stuff. I can actually put together the show as if it's live while I'm recording it. I have editing capabilities for the recorded files in the platform now. Zencaster also now can host the podcast, so I don't need to output an MP3 file or video, and then upload it somewhere else. You can also host it. And then you also have an ad network so I can manage dynamic ad insertions and monetize the show. Am I missing something? Is that all of it? Yeah, you're correct. The only thing at the end of the dynamic part, we're adding in like two weeks. So that part is coming, but it's not quite there yet. But yeah, exactly. You can easily record audio and or video. Uh, We get, we give you the automated transcripts. Um, We have added new, production um, options like um, automatically remove ums and ahs, automatically remove long pauses. This is in a lot of what most editors are spending a lot of their time doing is those kind of basic tasks. And we do, we run the, the a series of audio enhancements to just make it um, sound, sound really great as well. And then yeah, quick, quickly, quickly and easily you create a show. You can just get it out, publish, distribute it. People can consume it from all the major RSS consumption apps or platforms that can be consumed on zencaster.com. And then, yeah, we also have uh, attribution and campaign tracking tools for um, podcasting ad campaigns. We can either help you find advertisers to be on your show, or if you already have your own advertisers and you just want to be able to uh, track the campaigns and show them, Hey, I, I can prove that I'm driving uh, you know, visits to your site or demos, or, um, even we can track, um, conversions if they're using Stripe or Shopify, um, to really give you the assets you need to prove to brands that you're driving value for them and to keep them, keep them, uh, in the campaign. Awesome. That's just, I mean, I think you solved a bunch of problems there with all these new features. So I want you to tell me more about the video capabilities because this show is primarily an audio podcast. Now, we're recording the video for this episode just to show the quality and such. So the YouTube that I do upload for this episode, for those of you listening out there, will be the actual video of of Josh and I chatting. So uh, and maybe I'll reconfigure my habit there to just make the show video as well. But that remains to be seen. But I'm an audiophile. Help me get into the mindset of using video for the show, too. It's easy to record But my biggest issue with video is that it takes extra time editing in my experience that, and and I don't think watching two or three people talk on a radio program is inherently compelling, but I've done video live streams as shows and podcasts before, but the video product becomes primary, which then takes away from the audio quality in my opinion. So talk me off the ledge. Am I wrong? How, how would you recommend someone use the video features of Zencaster? Yeah. Great question. Like I don't, audio podcasting isn't going anywhere. We're going to continue to support that UK use case indefinitely. Um, and I'm not trying, we don't want to be too pushy about it. We just find that podcasters really want to grow and video really helps them grow. Like, uh, you know, the stats we see is something like four to five times faster. And I do think you're right. You got to be careful if you make it a video show <clears throat> and you start doing lots of visual stuff that maybe doesn't translate to the audio, then you you may sort of lose some of your audience that likes to listen to your show while they're working out or running or doing laundry because they can't, can't watch. Right. So you gotta be mindful of that. But if you have video and the audio and transcriptions, and then you can clip that into like the best parts and then send that out to TikTok and Twitter and Instagram. Now you've got a much better way to engage and reach a lot more um, people across all the different social channels that you have and then bring them back into your podcast. Yeah. And I notice when I'm listening to a video podcast, um, oftentimes I'm not watching it. I'll put it up in the corner of my screen. Every once in a while when they say something especially interesting or funny, I'll, I do like going and referencing, seeing how they're laughing, how they're reacting, yeah. what the guest is, looks like. Um, but that is like, I think sort of the secondary way that I want to consume it. I do want to just be able to be something I can walk around with in my pocket, you know? Sure. And so it's about, it's really about the reach that you can get, um, through having a piece of content that's native 
on an Instagram or a TikTok where <clears throat> if you just post uh, a, an hour long podcast on Twitter with audio only, obviously that's not really how that medium works <laughs> and you're not going to convert really well. So that's really why we're trying to help people get into video. Yeah, that's true. Well, I, I certainly could use, uh, you know, a little bit more time and focus on uh, developing the video aspects of this show. So I appreciate the the impetus to do that uh, with this episode. So I'm going to try to look at how we, you know, edit this post, you know, recording and figure out, can I make this streamlined and easy for me to turn my previous, you know, video efforts are all audiograms on YouTube, but I'd love to be able to, to actually record these things and just have that there for the people that want it. So I appreciate the, the inspiration there. We're talking to the founder and CEO of Zencaster today, Josh Nielsen. When we come back, I want to get his take on some bigger industry issues that we're all facing. So stick around. Back with Josh Nielsen, the founder and CEO of Zencaster, not only the longtime interview back into this show, but also a recent sponsor of the show. Zencaster's ad network and uh, creator network is a client and, and, and customer of the marketing podcast network, if you will. Neither of those things have anything to do with Josh being here. When you get the chance to interview the CEO of a big deal, you take it. So that's why Josh is here. So Josh, let's talk about the industry a bit. Podcasts continue to explode. That's obviously a good thing for Zencaster, which now provides that soup to nuts array of services for podcasters. But I wanted to ask philosophically, is the exponential growth of podcasting really a good thing? Are we going to reach a critical mass where there's just too much to choose from and very little stands out? Is that problematic for you in any way? You know, maybe, um, maybe someday. <laughs> But I think the problems that we're seeing right now is that um, there's not too much out there. And if there is, you can't find it. And um, when or if you're out there, it's hard to be discovered already, even though it's not maybe as crowded as the market ever could be. It's not so much about being crowded as the problem is that it's, it's hard to. <clears throat> there's not mechanisms in place in the podcasting market like you may see on YouTube to help f feature um, podcast or creators that are have you know are standing out and growing and like giving them some juice when they need it at the beginning to to get noticed and that's one of the things that uh, you know we want to focus on as well at Zencaster but even more broadly like I think I think podcasting is you know a net benefit for society I think that it really helps us. Um, have dialogue and discourse that is maybe really hard to do on some of these other platforms in a productive way where people come to points of maybe uh, empathizing and agreeing with one another over, um, you know, getting the, into shouting matches. And so, it, you know, we get, and we've got sort of these broader problems with maybe censorship on some of the social platforms. And I'm a big firm believer that, the answer to bad speech is not censorship. It's more good speech. And so mm -hmm. the more people that we can get into using a medium that lends itself to um, better conversations, I, I think we're all going to benefit for it. So I, I don't particularly worry that the, the space is going to go downhill as it gets bigger. I think it's just going to become more and more interesting. Well, that's fair and a good perspective. And and I, I don't know that I disagree with you at all, just because, you know, we said the same thing about when, you know, when social networks emerged and blogs emerged, you know, the, the danger was, well, if you give everyone the ability to publish easily, the problem is everyone will, and then you're going to have just a lot of crap out there that, uh, but you know, that whether it's the search engines or the social network algorithms or, um, you know, the, 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 the good thing about having a lot to choose from is consumers have the choice. They can listen to something or not listen to something. They can follow a channel or not follow a channel. And so it kind of solves itself in the long run. The, the noise uh, goes away and the signal stands out as it is apt to do. So I, I definitely don't disagree with you. Why do you think that podcast apps, the, the Apple podcasts and the Spotify's and the Google podcasts and the stitchers, why do you think the podcast apps can't get search and discovery right? I mean, do do any of them not understand search? I mean, Google's been around for, you know, 20 plus years. Can they not emulate some more sophisticated platforms and helping us find relevant shows or episodes? Yeah, it's interesting because if you if you go on Google and you search like fluffy white dog, the, it, all these images are going to pop up, right? They've got a lot yep. of intelligence around the images, but if you 
type podcast about, I, I, you know, it's not going to work nearly as well for, it's not just podcasting, it's audio in general, just the intelligence around audio is, is, is pretty far behind what we have right now for image recognition, but that's changing very quickly. And to answer your question in short, the reason why the intelligence isn't there is because somebody has got to foot the bill to transcribe all the content and then run the further processing to understand it. Right. And so, um, for whatever reason, Google hasn't seen that to be part of, you know, what's important for their product. Um, but it's definitely highly important for podcast search and discovery. And so, uh, that's, you know, part of what we're helping with, with Zencaster. We're very, you know, we are not, we launched just the very first tip of our consumption platform, uh, with, um, this last launch. So you can, if you publish on Zencaster, you can come and watch the audio and video there. Um, but pretty soon we're going to be able to, you know, we got the transcripts in there. We'll be able to help you search and discover on Zencaster and otherwise through just knowing what the people are talking about. Um, it's just, it hasn't, hasn't been built yet. And so we're, um, trying, we're making that happen. That's great. Well, I'm glad you are for sure. So help us with a little discovery here, Josh. What are your top two or three podcasts you listen to? What's a good find for us? Oh, well, here's a couple of great ones that uh, I've enjoyed recently. And some of these are less relevant and some of these are more relevant for your audience. But one is a bit of a guilty pleasure. It's called That UFO Podcast, if you're interested. <laughs> okay. Um, there's a lot happening these days in this space with uh, the U.S. government making disclosures about these sorts of things. So it's an interesting topic to me. Um, there's another one. True crime is always uh, always fun. We, uh, there's one called that uh, the Gruesome Podcast. That's really great. We love. And then you know there's another one that I've been checking out. That's actually on your network, which you know obviously makes sense for me. It's called the Business of Podcasting. Yeah. And so you know a little nod there as well. Oh, awesome. Well, I appreciate that. Chris, Christopher Hines will be uh, thrilled to know that you're, you're listening to the business of podcasting along the marketing podcast network. He's been a guest on the show too. So we, we love his wisdom and does a great job there. Good stuff. I, I, I like the true crime stuff too, but for whatever reason, like I've, I've subscribed to like, you know, Dateline NBC and a couple of the ones that are, you know, the episodes are kind of self-contained, but I like the ones that are like, you know, 10 episodes, you know, seasons where you're going really deep into the case for whatever reason. So I just finished up the, uh, uh, the teacher's pet, which is a couple years old now. And of course they just had the teacher's trial because the guy wound, wound up, you know, spoiler alert, the guy wound up getting arrested for it. But, uh, but yeah, true crime is, is my guilty pleasure too. I don't get into the UFO stuff, but I'll take your recommendation and go listen to that one and, and, uh, see what I think. So it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> Josh Nielsen, thank you for being here today and making podcasting more accessible, affordable, and approachable for everybody. I love what Zencaster does and will continue to use at least parts, if not eventually all of the new product features. So I, I genuinely appreciate what you've built here, man. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Jason. Uh, really happy to be on the show. Thank you for the invitation. Well, uh, but before we go, I guess we should uh, remind people where they can find you and the awesomeness of Zencaster on the interwebs. Yeah. So um, you can find us at Zencaster on Twitter, obviously Zencaster.com on the web. That's Z-E-N-C-A-S-T-R, no E, uh, getting do E domains was hard <laughs> back then. Um, and uh, uh, shoot, what else? We got our blog you can find from the website. And then we've got our own podcast as well that you can find from the Zencaster.com. Uh, homepage. Um, come check out the story of how Zencaster was created from ideation all the way to, um, I think the next season will be up to, to modern day. Awesome. Well, we're looking forward to seeing that. And thank you again for being here, Josh. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot.